Okay, we're going to be looking at a quick thing about measuring. How do you do measurements properly, scientifically? And we're going to practice this a little bit in class. And I'm going to give you a few tips about converting between units. So first of all, a couple of things we can measure are length. I'm sure you all do this. When I was growing up, I would be very self-conscious about my height. And I'm still hoping at the age of, I don't even know how old I am now. That's another thing, counting age. I'm still hoping that I can grow a little bit taller and get a few more millimeters or centimeters or even a one millimeter would be fine. And uh, that's, that would be really important. So measuring length, you can use rulers, measuring tape, I'm sure you understand that. Being able to convert between millimeters, centimeters, how many of these are in here and how many of these are in here. I'm going to show you how to do that down here as well too. But you should know 10 millimeters in a centimeter, 100 centimeters in a meter and a, a thousand meters in a kilometer, for example. Okay, so that's length. Measuring mass, we're also very self-conscious of our mass. How much do I weigh? That's another thing we'll learn about weight versus mass a little bit later. But for now, you can just use them interchangeably. So, you know, we often know how much we weigh in, in, in kilograms. I know my mass in kilograms. If you're in America, then you might use another unit called pounds or for height in America, you might use feet and inches. We're going to talk about what scientists tend to use, but these ones that are listed here are pretty good. Grams, kilograms, and know their abbreviations. Volume, very important. Different things here. You might want to make a note. Uh, milliliters, that's kind of hard to say fast. Milliliter, milliliter, milliliter. Milliliter and centimeters cubed. These are both measuring volume. Um, Although the volume in one milliliter is technically equivalent to one centimeter cubed, usually, I guess you could say milliliters are used, are, are used for uh, liquid amounts and centimeters cubed often referring to a, a block of some kind, maybe solid things or you're referring to a particular fixed space of how many cubic centimeters okay so you can do that milliliters and cubic centimeters when you're using something like this this is called a graduated cylinder or a measuring cylinder see if you can spell that graduated cylinder or measuring cylinder when you're measuring the volume it's very important i'm going to draw a little eyeball here is this going to work that if you are looking at this that it's important that you look straight on to this now, sometimes there may be some dangerous chemicals in here, so you don't want to be lifting this too high. But you would put this on the table, put this thing on the table, and you would lower your head to look so that you're staring at this straight on. And your goal is to read, see how this is kind of curved? We'll explain why that happens as well too, that's kind of neat. But you want to read the bottom of this curve, not the top of the curve, or don't try to estimate the middle. The very bottom of this is called the meniscus. M-E-N-I-S-C-U-S, -E and you'll use that to measure liquids. And the thinner these graduated or me measuring cylinders are, the more you'll see that the liquid actually curved. It's pretty neat how it does that. But the people who've made this measuring cylinder know that liquids already do this, and so they've actually calculated it, and so they've drawn the scales here so it makes sense. You're supposed to be reading straight on like this. Don't be looking from the top like this, right? You think you're much better than the measuring cylinders, you're gonna look down on it, okay? And you shouldn't be down here, because that's just silly. And also, if someone knocks this over, and all this stuff spills on you, okay? Right into your eyeball, that's not gonna be good. So you'll usually wear some protection, like some goggles. That just looks like an eyeball in a box. Okay, um, underneath your notes, uh, go ahead and write this down. For now, I'm going to switch your window over, and uh, you're going to write down K, put leaves some space, then H, leaves some space, then D, leaves some space, star, leaves some space, D, again, leaves some space, C, leave some space, and then M. Okay. One really important thing about measurements and these units that we're talking about is that it's important for scientists to communicate in the same units. 
Uh, there's a couple very sad stories. Here's one about a particular flight, um, Air Canada Flight 143. You've heard about a few others. But due to a calculation error by the technicians who were converting, they weren't using kilograms, they were using pounds to calculate how much fuel needed to be added into a plane. And they, because they were using a different unit, they messed up and they didn't have enough fuel. So pilots were forced to attempt a crash landing. Fortunately, I think everyone was okay. The pilot was very skilled. But just a simple thing of people in America using pounds and then people in other parts of the world using kilograms. And if you're not using the same unit, then 100, the number 100 means a very different thing. 100 pounds and 100 kilograms is very different. I weigh around 60, maybe I shouldn't tell you this, but anyways, <laughs> I weigh 64 kilograms or so, but if I was weigh, if I made that, made a mistake and I, I, and I was actually, and I tried to tell you that I would weigh 64 pounds, uh, you might think that I was very, very sick. Uh, 64 pounds is not a lot. That's how much, uh, like a sixth grader weighs. I don't know. I'm not exactly sure. I don't check on the average weights of various grade students. But anyways, that's an example of why we need to use the same units around the world. And scientists all use the metric system. We don't use pounds. We use kilograms, grams, milliliters, kilometers, um, so on and so forth. Okay.